I can essentially turn this Vega 56 into a Vega 64. Hello folks, welcome to NetCruiser Tech. Video cards. Around the end of 2019, I did do a bunch of PC upgrades that I had started recording some clips of doing some things that I never did finish, so I want to get those out the door before they become obsolete, because as you know, tech changes so often, it's really easy for the stuff to become outdated super quick. So what I did was, probably near the end of summer 2019, I upgraded the video card in my Intel machine to a Radeon Vega 56. Now at the time, I picked this up on Amazon Open Box because it was a really good value. It was around $380 for an eight gig Radeon 56 in a Strix type triple fan cooler with a bunch of RGB lighting. Pretty cool card. This is kind of marketed as a mid-range 1440p graphics card. Now the reason why it was likely returned is because this Strix cooler is being recycled on a bunch of different models, so it doesn't exactly have ideal cooling for the board that they put in them. But overall, for the money for performance at the time, which was around August to September of 2019, I really couldn't beat this for the price. Now there's a Radeon RX 5600, 5700 that kind of meet this performance or exceed it a bit for mm, around that same kind of a price point, although you really... I still think that a Vega is the value option right now if you can find one like this because there's a way that you can get additional free performance out of this, which is what this video is about. I can essentially turn this Vega 56 into a Vega 64 with a BIOS update. That works through this card because this one in particular uses Samsung HBM memory. So I am able to do a BIOS flash on it to get additional performance out of it. So let's this go is through the that. current state of my Intel i5-8600K. I had put in a Vega 56. I have since done a BIOS update and updated it to a Vega 64. Okay, for safety's sake, I just ran a BIOS backup utility, which uh, if you wanna see the syntax for that, I've created a batch file. Here's the commands that you need to back up your BIOS. And now I'm going to try and flash my Vega 56 to a Vega 64. Here we go, BIOS flash. I've already taken the BIOS, which is the Strix, renamed it to BIOS.ROM, and now we will run this as administrator. VB flash not recognized. Um, all right, hold on. Okay, I'm not sure what's up, so I've just manually added in the path to where the actual file is. And that should work. Let's try it. Flashing. Restart system. Programming verified. Wow, that was fast. Okay, now I restart. Fingers crossed that we get a boot screen here. Oh, good. Well, and considering that the graphics are all messed up, I think it worked. I'm going to dial it in, and I should have just created my Vega 56 into a Vega 64. Okay, I do believe that it worked. It took a while. Windows detected it as a new hardware, and now we're picking up as an RX Vega running at the full clock speed at faster memory. I think we're good. Now to test it out, see how much performance I got. So I've got my Vega 64 settings dialed in. This is my undervolt and overclock. So I've got a 50 millivolt undervolt and that's my CPU uh, top megahertz. It's currently running a Unigy benchmark in the background right now. It's stable, but I cannot, um, 
run the RAM at the full uh, 945 because if I leave it at 945, I eventually get like weird sparkles and artifacts. So that's part of the Silicon Lottery. My HBM Samsung RAM is not very good. So I do have to dial it down a bit. But uh, where I started Vega 56, I was at 800 megahertz and now I'm at 925. So that's a good, that's a pretty good result. There is one issue with the Strix cards though, is that they recycle that CPU cooler for all the different designs. So that CPU cooler, while it is big and beefy, they don't design it per, for each PCB. So that this Vega card particularly has really hot VRMs. And as we're running this benchmark here, we can see my temperature hotspot. It's at 103 degrees, but the VRM temps are at 111 degrees Celsius system on a chip VRM temps those are really hot so not much you can do about that that's just how it is on this card even if I wasn't tweaking with these settings it just runs hot may not have the longest lifespan but for the price that I paid can't complain by the time it dies something better will be out that's much more efficient and more powerful so whatever just use it while it's here should be good. Do you want to see what my settings are? I'm currently at 2560 by 1440, four times anti aliasing. So I've now done that upgrade, which essentially turns it into a Vega 64. The speed improvement of the clock speed and the memory is more important than having the extra cores that a real Vega 64 has. So you're really getting within a couple of percentage points of having a real Vega 64 by doing that BIOS mod. If you end up getting a video card like this one that has the Samsung HBM RAM in a Radeon Vega. So it seems like a pretty good value proposition now. These are still cheaper than what you can get with the new RX 5600, 5700 video cards. So if you're looking to get a value 1440p video card, check out the Radeon Vega line. I think they're, they're still quite good for the money. Bang for buck though, if you're looking for 1080p gaming, something like the RX 580 or RX 570 is under $200 and is perfectly great at 1080p. But if you want that extra headroom for high Hertz gaming, if you want to get like 144 Hertz at 1440p, you're going to want a Vega line or better.